Hello, this is Elder Sister Debbie, and I just shared the experience I had when I was young in God, going to heaven, and I'm getting ready to post that right now. But today, I want to do a brief teaching on being to about living in the Spirit. We say these these terms, these words, and yet we deny the power thereof. You know, we study the Word of God, we quote the Scriptures, but yet we deny the power thereof. Um, and when we become spiritual-minded, um, and you you um, become strong in your uh, as you increasing in your, as you are increasing in your faith um, of the kingdom, with the king, kingdom, and in your um, inheritance, you should be becoming spiritual minded which means that things should cross your mind just as it would normally to do on an everyday basis <clears throat> for example um i wasn't feeling too well today and this is not something that i do every now and then this is something that i do all the time i wasn't feeling too well today stomach was feeling a little sick and so um, I said, where's my communion? <laughs> Spirit-minded. So I went, and um, this is my communion uh, ministry case here. This is what I have my communion in. It, um, it comes with some cups and um, some canisters to hold the wine or the, or the um, juice, and then it comes with a little thing of that you can put your all, um, your all in, and then they have a little place where you can put your Bible in and such like this. But this is mine. I don't um, use the little cups and the bread, the bread, the bread chips. I have mines um, filled with these little communion cups, which are pre-measured and they have the little bread in it like that. It has a place where you can put your um, your all. See, this is my all. And being an elder, these things is something that comes with me all the time. Not only do I have the all, I also have um, the um, the balm. This is um, all of gladness, and this uh, this is the rose of Sharon, and this is pomegranate balm. And um, I've used this on occasions on myself. I've also used it sometimes when dealing with children or dealing with um, even adults. Sometimes with dealing with the Catholic, um, put the sign of the cross on them and you know pray for them. Um, it has an amazing scent. This is pomegranate. This is rose of Sharon. You can buy this from the Bible bookstore. As becoming a, an elder, um, I was instructed to get the things. These things are. These things have been given to me by God. So I carry them out of obedience and out of my occupation. Yes, I'm a prophetess. Yes, I can. Yes, I'm a prophetess. Yes, I'm an elder. An elder is a person that can um, teach the word of God and also teach the doctrine. So we're talking about becoming spiritual minded. You must learn to live in the spirit all the time. My stomach was feeling a little ill and I've been in this thing since I was 18. You have to become spirit-minded, which means you need to handle, touch, and taste, and put your hands on things that are spirit, um, spirit linked to the kingdom of God, to the word of God, to the obedience of God, and to the lifestyle of a believer in Christ. Okay. So, being um, I wasn't feeling too well today, and like I said, this is normal for me. I learned this from my mom. My mom lived this way. I live this way. So I wasn't feeling well this morning. My stomach was a little bad. The Bible says, you know, when the stomach is sick, James says, drink a little wine for the stomach. It'll settle the stomach down. Well, I got to say, well, I ain't got a little wine. I say, but I do have something better than wine. And so I um, open up my, sorry, I'm not left-handed. I don't know why I'm trying to do that with my left hand. Um, I opened up my communion. And this is something you need to practice. If you don't have this little, these little communion packages, which you can get them from the Bible bookstore, then you can go and, um, they're so hard to open. You can just um, 
get you some, uh, what you call, graham crackers, soda crackers, or those little oyster crackers, the little round crackers, and get you some grape juice. Um, and give yourself communion. I give myself communion. Um, when I'm sick, I give myself communion too, because this is healing. And I remind myself that this is the total covenant in healing and being set free from captivity of any sort. And it is the, because it is the body and the blood of my Lord that set me free. And I will take the bread, put it in my mouth, take the wine. Give it a few minutes and I feel good. <laughs> you need to practice doing stuff like that. Are you spiritual minded? Do you live your life truly in the spirit or do you just say that? Because um, or, 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 you're denying the power if you don't. If the communion has been set aside for the healing of the body, the Bible says this, many people take communion and they take it unworthy. Now, some people think that they can take communion Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Take communion and go right back into the lifestyle they were in. How are they living it? That's not true. Because then repentance is nothing. Repent means to stop, turn around, and don't repeat it no more. Right? And the word, um, the apostle said this, and this is why a lot, this is why a lot of saints are sick, and a lot of them, or even has fell asleep because they take the communion unworthy. Though you take in, when you take the body of Christ, you are, you are becoming one with, with the crucified Lord. You are saying that the, the 39 stripes on his back, this blood is from that. You are saying the, the breaking, the brokenness of his body where his flesh was torn and he was beaten, that that, was for me, for the, the uh, restoration of my body. You're taking that with the under, and the words of what he says, do this in remembrance of me. When you do this in remembrance of him, you are releasing yourself from the anguish and the captivity, even in your mind. And a lot of people, because they're not understanding how this communion is supposed to be working, they don't take it. We must live by the Spirit at all times. When you get sick, do you grab your communion? Do you say, wait a minute, uh-uh, devil. Well, something is wrong with my body. Do you take the heavenly cures or do you still not know how to handle that? When you are under attack, for example, if you are under attack or someone in your household is under attack, spiritually, mentally, physically, um, if, if salvation has been given to you, then you are, have been made king and priest in that household. Then nothing should be getting past you. What I mean by that is that you should be able to handle it. You have to become spiritual minded. The kingdom of God is not with observation, Jesus said. It's not something with observation. But the kingdom of God, he says, hold on, Joe, hold on. Okay, we are back. Now, look in Luke chapter 17 and we're going to take it from verse 11 and i'm going to read it to verse i don't know how far i'm gonna go but turn to luke chapter 17 and we're going to start at verse 11. we have to be spiritual minded but we need to live in the spirit and we need to live by the spirit we can quote a bunch of scriptures Okay, you can know this Bible back and forth. But unless you are doing what you are reading, then you are saying it has no powers. So, you, you can say the words of God, but if you don't practice it, then you're saying, okay, I'm denying the power thereof. So, when I was feeling ill today, I said, you know what, where's my communion? I went and got my communion. This isn't the first one I took. This is the second one I've taken. I just to show you how uh, how it comes pre-packaged, but you can get you some oyster um, 
crackers or you could get just some plain soda crackers, you know, sartine crackers or plain crackers. And just break it into piece and take a little grape juice and re, 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 um, declare out loud the covenant of, of, uh, that the captive have been set free by the breaking of, the, of God's body and by the drinking of his blood. And your body will be made whole. When, when, if you don't become spiritual minded and begin to practice what you are reading, it does not become common to you. It doesn't become known. You're not living and putting your hands on things that are spiritual. It's not enough to know it. You have to move the kingdom here. Okay. Now I want to show you something. Let's look into, um, the Bible says when you, when you fast, he says, anoint yourself, right? So you can use bomb and just anoint yourself, or you can use all and anoint yourself. Okay. And remember that fasting, fasting does not increase your faith. Okay. Fasting humbles your body to listen to the spirit and to listen to God, because the Holy Spirit is trying to direct you through your spirit. But if your body has all the strength, it will fight, the Bible says, against that which is spiritual. So you should have a normal lifestyle in the spirit. If you feel sick, get you some communion. You should be reaching for that just out of, 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 of regularity. You, that should be normal to you, to reach for communion. And, and, um, and live in the spirit life that you've been given. You've been given spiritual life, and that spiritual life affects your physical. But if you don't live the spirit life, how's it going to affect your spiritual? When I injured my back in 1999 in nursing, um, and I went through many years of, of testings and medications and procedures and all that, and I still could not walk from my front door down my, my driveway. It was ridiculous. I could not do it. But as I begin to grab hold of the word of God and begin to live what I know. See, because Jesus said that the kingdom is not with observation. You're not going to find it anywhere. It's not anywhere. It's not in anybody's auditorium. It's not in anybody's book. It's not with observation. You won't go here and find it anywhere. You won't go there and see it anywhere. The kingdom of God has to be um, lived by faith in your connection, remember I just told you about how I went to heaven. That connection with the kingdom. So when I was had this uh, the back injury, I was walking with a walker. Couldn't walk hardly at all. I had a back brace on, and I everywhere I couldn't leave the house. And I had this walker that had the four legs on it. I started taking, and I was I was go to church. I go to my apostle church, and I would walk down there very slowly with that walker, and I would only go like two rows. Um, as I come through the entry day and I sit at the, the top row, um, because our platform went downward because I, I literally could not walk that far. So I would walk from the, the driveway through the front door, through the entryway. And I will sit in the first or second row at the back of the church because I couldn't go nowhere else. So, um, I started giving myself communion and I started declaring the, and believing that I, when I take this communion, um, spiritually, I am connecting with my master, okay? So I would come in there with my walker. I would say within a couple of weeks, I was coming through and I had a cane. And my apostle was looking, and I was moving a little further down, like midway down the church now. Because we had over 100 rows in this auditorium that we had a church in. Um, and then I would say within a couple of weeks after that, I would say within two months, within two months, I walked, I was walking with a walker with four legs. Then I, I, next time they saw me coming through there, I was walking there with a cane on, with a cane, a single cane. Then the next time they saw me getting a little bit closer, the next time they saw me, I was walking down the aisles in heels and I sat on the first row. My apostle watched my progress and he asked me. He said, little prophetess, he said, 
what's going on? What are you doing? What are you doing? Because we, you, now you don't have nothing. I said, oh, I get myself communion every day. Now, the Church of God of Christ in which I was dealing with, you know, it was called the Church of God of Christ or the undenominational um, factor of, the, of, of uh, organizations, however they call themselves. Um, they believe that uh, you can uh, you, you only take communion um, as will or, you know, as such as you do. And they do it to where they don't do it at all. You know, I, I don't understand what such as you and they never do it. Right. When this is purely give, this is plainly given to the, the body of Christ. And yet you hold it hostage. You know, I don't understand that. But so that's the way it was taught. So when he asked me, what am I doing or what did I do or what am I doing that I didn't went from um, a four leg walker to a cane to walking in high heel shoes down this auditorium and sitting on the first row and dancing in them. I said, oh, I give myself communion every day. And he just gave me the strangest look. He said, really? I said, every day. I said, it's for the healing of my body. I said, my body's healed. And so from that day on, he started teaching, um, reteaching the communion um, covenant and, and did not give communion as such as you will kind of thing. But he made a designated time to give uh, the communion. And so we began to see healing come through the house of God. And that's how I learned to live by the spirit, with the spirit, and of the spirit. You have to do all three, okay? Because if not, you're just living by the word. If not, you just, you, you have the, 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 the tools to live by, the promises to live by, and you still won't do it. Okay, so then you are still denying the power in which you have been given. And my body, to this day, I do not walk with any, with any um, walkers. If I walk with a cane, my hip is hurting me pretty good. And I will walk with a cane. That is very seldom. You know, um, I do walk with the buggy going through the store just to make sure I'm moving at an even pace, you know, because, you know, bodies will be bodies. But even though I'm in this and the frailties are in here, it does not deny the power of God. And the strength and the healing that I have, I will not deny none of it. But I am saying that I know that the, the healing um, virtue of God can hold these bones together and they can make a move. Okay? And if I have to take it every day, I'll take it every day. That's just what you have to do. So I want you to look in um, Luke, the 17th chapter, um, the 11th verse, and we're going to read down. Are you living truly by the Spirit of God or are you just saying things? If you don't pick up this stuff and start doing it, then you're living by observation. That means you're looking for it over here and over there, and it's in this and it's in that, but you yourself have not grabbed hold of the kingdom. Now watch this. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. You getting ready to go? Yeah. Where are you going? Okay. No twisting, no pulling. Okay. Jesus heals the ten lepers. Now, this is in Luke 17, chapter, verse uh, 11. Hold on. Okay, you ready? Luke chapter 17, verse 11 says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there he met him ten men that were leopards, which stood afar off then it wasn't supposed to be around the people, okay? Um, not with leprosy. And they lifted up their voices, these 10 leopards, and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus hearing their cry from afar. And when he saw them, leopards, flesh falling off, rotten, stinking, you know, they wrap it so you don't see all the, the lesions and and such, you know, and they are contagious, okay? When Jesus saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourself unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. <laughs> I want to stop there for a moment. That's very important. Why? Now, these ten men had leprosy. They were not allowed to be in the presence of people. They were supposed to be outside the city. 
Leprosy is contagious. Okay. Um, and it is the, de the, the deteriorating, the infections, pussing of the body, of the, of the flesh. It's like a flesh eating disease. Okay. So they weren't supposed to be around anyone. So they call for Jesus afar. Jesus, master. Oh, is he your master? Have mercy on us. And Jesus saw them standing far away. But yet he could hear their voices. And he called back out to them. Go and show yourselves to the priests. Woo! Thought I'd give you cheer bumps. He did nothing else. He didn't say any specific prayers. He didn't do anything that has been recorded other than say, go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, their leprosy, their skin began to get like baby skin. Lesions began to disappear. Um, deterioration of the flesh, blood and pus went away. The skin repaired itself. Their nose came back on. Their ears came back on. The lesions in their mouth, where they half their mouth might have been eaten up. And, and all that came back. He said, go. Go show yourself to the priest. Now, why is that important? In the Old Testament, God gave Moses instructions according to... Um, how to deal with certain sicknesses, illnesses, and diseases. Okay, sicknesses and illnesses and diseases was during the time of Moses as well. So God gave them, and God gave the man of God instructions on how to deal with such things. Because they were always under attack of the enemy. The devil was always trying to make people sick. And he would pass that on to the elders and the priests and such how to handle sicknesses, disease, mental illness, witchcraft. All the stuff was taught by God who taught it to Moses. And Moses then taught it to the people. Now I'm going to show you something. Okay, turn with me to the book of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus is the book of laws, rituals, and, and um, things that was done in ceremonial uh, uh, um, ceremony order that brought forth healing, deliverance, and restitution of sins. So this is what God laid down as the laws with them. Okay. Now there is a law for clean, the cleansing of a leopard. Now, leprosy is a real disease. Okay. But let's also, when you think about leprosy, let's also Remember that uh, leprosy, even though their leprosy was cleansed, it was also the cleaning of the sin. Because Jesus often said to some, to the people, okay, once he healed them, once he set that captive free, he would say, you go. Your fate has made you whole. Go. Thou have been made whole. But listen, don't go sin no more. Because other than that, the worst of thing will come upon you. So if we go back into sin, then we bring back the illness. We'll bring back the attack. We'll bring back the torment if we go back in. Okay? Now, once we've been set free by Jesus, by the communion and such, our part in walking by the Spirit is to now stand on that. Okay? Because Satan can always come and test what you got. How you know you heal? Well, you woke up with back pain. And what's your parent? My skeleton's moving. You know? <laughs> you know? So you got to kind of hit him in his face and don't let him talk to you, you know? Mm -hmm. So let's go into um, the book of Levi Leviticus and let's go into 14th chapter of Leviticus. Watch this. I want to show you something. He said, go and show yourself to the priest. There is um, the law. Le Leviticus, the 14th chapter says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, 
There shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy is uh, be healed in that leper, then the then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean and cedar wood scar and scarlet and hip 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 and the uh, priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in the earthen vessel over running water as for the living bird he shall take it and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hop and the hopsy and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water and he shall sprinkle it upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the living bird loose into the open field and he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes shave off all his hair and wash himself in water that he may be clean and then after that he shall come into the camp and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days and what happens day one through seven the priest watches that person to see if there's any sign of leprosy they will watch for a white spot whether it's under their arm, under their breast, if it's women, private parts, they'll shave their head because sometimes it could be in their hair, in their mouths. You know, they'll watch for um, signs of the leprosy. But the um, throwing of the 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 water, the 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 water, the blood, and the cedar and the scarlet from the the uh, the blood the. Uh, the bird that is alive upon them seven times will bring the cleansing. Okay, let's go back. So, as these leopards were beginning to cry out to Jesus, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus, seeing these leopards from afar, called back out to them. And say, go and show thyself to the priests. And when they left to go, to, to go to the priests, because the priests have to what? Take them outside the camp. They have to be stripped down, go take a bath, and then shave their heads. And then he would have to do the cleansing on them. Saying that they'll cleanse seven times. They had to do that. Why? Because Jesus said this, he said, I did not come to destroy the law, and I did not come to destroy the prophets. Many of the, all of the things that Jesus did, even to the baptism of himself, being baptized by John, if he had not been baptized by John, he would be destroying the law. If God said it, then it has to be done. Is he above God that he don't have to do it? No. He has to do it. So when it came to the lepers, the lepers had to be seen by the priests and go outside the camp, take a bath, take off all their clothes, shave their head, and be examined. Once they are examined, then they are sprinkled seven times, saying that they are cleansed. See that? Now watch this. We end back in Luke chapter 17. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went by the word of Jesus. Jesus said, go and show thyself to the priest. Now, if Jesus told them to go show themselves to the priest, Jesus is proclaiming a cleansing on them, proclaiming their healing to them. So you go and you show yourself to the priests, and the priests will examine you, right? Now watch this. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back 
and with a loud voice glorify God. He fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So we have 10 leopards. Jesus told those 10 men, go and show yourself to the priest. He called out to them. They turned and went toward the priest to go be shown to the priest in the order of being cleansed, examined and cleansed um, by the priest. By the time, but one realized before he even got to the priest that he was already cleansed. He hadn't even gotten there yet. He hurried up and turned around and ran back to Jesus, fell down on his hands and feet and began to worship him as God. And he was a Samaritan. Samaritans were, uh, was a tribe of people that uh, was of the tribe of Judah, but they were also of the Gentiles. So it's, it's when the people of God would marry people outside of themselves, outside of uh, their, na their nation. And so this particular nation of people was called Samaritans. Okay? And uh, Jesus answered, said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? He was asking. They are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. And he said unto him, arise and go thy way. Thy fate has made thee whole. There was 10 leopards. Only one of them was a stranger. He was a foreigner. He wasn't of the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Jasper, the 12 tribes of Israel. He was an outsider that was standing with them, calling out to Jesus. And Jesus said, now, wasn't there 10 of you? He said, where are the nine? He said, you mean to tell me only one came back to give God the glory? And it's the stranger that's doing it, not the children of Israel. See how contentious we can be sometimes? Now watch this. He told him, arise and go your way. Because you see, you weren't even of the household of faith. And you believed when I told you, go show yourself to the priest. He said, your faith made you hope. We struggle sometimes a lot with faith. We try to build this huge teaching on it. We try to make it seem as though there's five steps to faith and 15 kinds of faith and you're not in this faith and this faith. Listen, <laughs> it's not that difficult. If I said, Jesus, the master, there was a ransom that was demanded for mankind. And Jesus, the Son of God, the Word that became flesh, said, I will pay that ransom and I will buy back. It was held under captivity and there was a ransom. Jesus paid the ransom cost. Even now, we see on the news that in one of the African nations, they have taken missionaries. And um, those that was traveling with them, uh, children and such, and have taken them. They want ransom for them. They want a million dollars for each one of them. That's a ransom to buy them back, to pay for their freedom, or else they will die. Jesus paid a ransom for someone that had us in captivity, that had not only the children, of Israel in captivity but he was he held not only that but mankind and he also claimed to this earth he took the whole birthright of Adam and of Eve he said was there not nine ten of y'all and only one came back and you you a Samaritan was the was the Jews was the Hebrews. Mm. He said, arise and go your way. He said, I want you to know your faith made you whole. 
If I tell you that a ransom was paid and that the Spirit of the Lord came and rested upon this man called Jesus, just as it is written and prophesied by the book of Isaiah, that it would. And the reason why the Spirit of the Lord came to be with Jesus was to help him pay the ransom that's going to be required to get you back. He had to be a spotless lamb. He had to be without blemish. He had to be without sin. He cannot be a transgressor or a lawbreaker. He cannot be defiled, injured, or unclean. He had to be a lamb that will be, that will be given as the ransom. We saw in the book of Leviticus, in the 14th chapter, where he had to bring two birds, two clean birds. One would be killed and the other will sprinkle the cleansing. There's a price that's been paid. The ransom has been paid. There's no one else that's being held under any delusional ransom. There is not the ransom was for this person and not for that one. Nope, it paid for everything. It paid for this world. It paid for the animals. It paid for the, the vintage, the greenage, the greenery. It paid for things in the ocean, in the air, and on the earth. It paid for human and it paid for animals. That ransom that Jesus became, he became the, the, the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice. When you live by the Spirit, you are living by that which was the ransom. When I am not feeling well, I don't give it a second thought. I grab my communion. When I want to go into sacrifice, sacrificing of myself to God for an acceptable day, a time to stay before God, I anoint myself with my balm. And I take water and I wash my face. So that I don't appear to men to be fasting. And I do it secretly. And if you're going to fast, you got to extract from everything. You can't be out there working and fasting. and no such thing. It's supposed to be an acceptable day unto the Lord. How are you going to have an acceptable day to the Lord and you working and you shopping and you hanging with your friends, having coffee and you having girls day out, boys day out, and you decide you're going to go sit on the lakefront and, um, and eat a salad? How is that an acceptable day of the Lord? You should be bringing yourself, the Bible says, you should be bringing it under submission. Not letting it have a party. This is Elder Sister Debbie. Are you living by the Spirit? By spiritual law? Spiritual knowledge? Are you doing that which maintain you? Or is it you have denied all the power thereof? Examine yourself. <laughs>